This is a 14 inch wreath form with six sections and four rows. I am starting on the second row on the outer part of the wreath form. I am cutting this deco mesh around 12 inches long, gathering it in the middle. I'm using two pieces of deco mesh at a time, and I'm only attaching one per section. And when I move to the third row, I am attaching it between the two meshes that I have already attached. You see the blue on the left and the purple on the right. So now I'm attaching it above and between those and I'm gonna go all the way around. For this wreath, I'm attaching the mesh with zip ties. The reason for that is it will be sturdier and the mesh won't move as easily on the wire form. I'm attaching the mesh this way to make it look more like a flower. So these are the petals. It actually works better if you use a fabric or jute burlap mesh, um, but this is what I'm using from the dollar store, but you can still kind of get a flower petal look from it. I'm using three rolls of mesh. You can certainly use more than that and give it a much fuller look. I just want to show you the minimum you can use to make it look nice. Now I'm going to work on the final row, the innermost row of the wreath form.
I had a little bit of mesh left over, so what I'm gonna do is just randomly attach it to the first row that I didn't attach any mesh to. You can use this extra mesh to fill in any gaps you see. I'm going to attach these individual deco mesh pieces with a piece of Chanel stem because they are just filler and they don't it doesn't matter if they move around or not. If you're concerned with a deco mesh fraying, they recommend cutting it with a rotary cutter instead of scissors. It's supposed to help reduce the fraying. And also some people go as far as using a soldering iron or ribbon cutters that actually heat and seal. And some people even hem the ends of their deco mesh. I'm not going to that extreme. Keep in mind when buying ribbon from the Dollar Tree, they're not very long. They're only about three yards. That's plenty for a big bow, and I'm adding a little extra throughout the wreath. But if you're really wanting a lot of ribbon, you need to buy several rolls. I'm using five in this.
I'm hot gluing these Chanel stems to the back of the sign so I can hang it easily on the wreath form. Some people prefer to staple the Chanel stem on or wire on the sign, but these signs from the Dollar Tree are really thin and it would just go right through it. This next step is very important or the Chanel stem will eventually fall off. This will make it last a lot longer. I don't know what it is about it, but it has always worked for me. I just take a piece of chipboard, which is like a cereal box or frozen pizza box, and just cut a small piece, hot glue it on top of the Chanel stem, and then I add more hot glue on top of it, and it works. While that is drying, I'm going to show you how to make a bow out of all five ribbons. I'm starting with the ribbon that I want on top. You can measure the loops like this to make sure they're about the same size. I usually don't do that, but if you want to, you can. My best tip for making a good bow is to make a loop and then twist the ribbon so the pattern, if there is a pattern, is on top. Now, it, you, I still do it if I don't have a pattern because it just makes the loops look better. Now I'm taking my second ribbon and I'm going to build underneath the existing bow. So determine how long you want your tails, I'm going to go bigger with the tails and bigger with the loops with each ribbon that I use. You do not have to do that. You can make everything the same size. This is just the pattern that I want to go with on this bow. I want it to be small and then get bigger and bigger. Again, you can do the same size loops and tails if you want to and you don't have to do tails at all if you don't want to. If it becomes too difficult for you to hold on to the bow and to make a new bow, simply take something like an alligator clip and just clip it down the center and that way it will hold on to it for you and you can make your next bow without having to hold on to that one. I've done so many bows it doesn't bother me anymore, but I wanted to show you a quick tip to do that. When making your bow, you can use as many patterns and as many colors as you want. Just make sure that some of the ribbons have the same colors. They don't all have to have the same colors in them. Some of these patterns, as you see this aqua color, is not in that plaid, but it is in the egg and bunny one. So as long as it's in another ribbon, it's okay. It will match.
I had a little bit of this purple left over, so I decided to go ahead and use some more of it in the bow. Um, I'm just measuring out how much I have, and I was able to make two loops and two tails with it, so I'm gonna stick it towards the bottom of the bow. Now I'm using a chenille stem to secure the bow. Make sure that it's going through the center of every one of those bows you made. Turn it over and twist it very tightly. When you finish, if you find a loop that you missed, and you'll know because you'll have a big loop hanging loose, just untwist the chenille stem and gather that piece back in. It's very easy to do that. I've done that a bunch of times. Now you just wanna fluff out your loops and twist them around to wherever you want them. Just keep moving them around and fluffing them out until you get the look you want. Now I just wanna cut the ends of each of these tails to make them look pretty. Now I'm taking these two longest tails and I'm curling them. I'm just twisting them and releasing them and they'll have a nice little curl to them. Now to attach the sign. And if you noticed, I put the Chanel stems on one side of the sign because I knew I wanted to attach it on the side and I wanted to make sure that it was off to the side enough but you can attach the Chanel stems wherever you want on the sign. Just make sure that the Chanel stems are gonna be long enough and in the place where you want them to be so they hang on the wreath the way you want them to. I want this sign to be on top of the wreath and not sunken down into the deco mesh, so I'm not pulling the Chanel stems tightly. Decide where you want your bow and simply run the Chanel stem through the wreath form. Make sure that it's covering at least one of the rows so when you attach it, it will stay on. I'm not pulling the Chanel stems very tightly because I want the bow to sit on top of the wreath and be a major focal point. It's very simple to take the bow and twist it however you want it. I'm taking this scrap piece of gross grain ribbon from my supply and I'm just making a little cheer bow for the top of the bunny's head. I'm securing the bow with the little piece of jute string that was on top of the sign. I'm just wrapping around and tying a knot. I always heat seal my gross grain ribbons by taking a lighter and running it very quickly along the edge. I'm not actually touching the ribbon with the flame, I'm just getting it close. You can use this same method with these wired ribbons. Just be very careful, especially of the thinner ribbons. You don't want to touch the flame to the ribbon, you just want to run it very close and very, very quickly. Some people prefer to use no fray that you get from the, any sewing department, but it will discolor your ribbon, so be careful of that. This is a egg garland. They're little styrofoam eggs 
that are glittery. So I just cut one off and I'm hot gluing the end of a Chanel stem and sticking the Chanel stem into the existing hole of the egg. I'm taking the rest of my leftover ribbon and I'm just going to put a few more pieces in the wreath. I'm finding the center of my bow and I'm just running this Chanel stem along the side of the bow through the wreath and I'm going to bring it back up and just twist it around itself loosely. It's not going to be too tight and then I'm just going to push the egg down so it looks like it's attached to the bow. If you prefer, you can hot glue the egg to the bow itself. I just hate to hot glue anything I don't have to. These cute little carrots came in a four pack. I'm just going to add one to my sign. My bunny sign has two holes on the top, so I'm going to cover those with some orange gemstones that I have in my supply. You don't have to do this step. I just want to cover them up um, and also add a little bit more orange. And here it is, my $12 Dollar Tree wreath. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate your support.